They have successfully extracted the secure key from a 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. And in this video, I will dig deeper to see if this would make our newer vehicles vulnerable to theft or any CAN bus attack. Let's get to it. Hey, it's LSFT here today, and today we're here to revisit the vulnerability of our vehicles and see if there is any higher chance of our vehicles being stolen or not. So last November, I released a video calling our, our Lexus or Toyota vehicles vulnerable to theft. And in this video, I actually talked about the changes that were made by Toyota and Lexus on the CAN bus and where they've actually introduced like a secure encrypted key to prevent messages going from the headlight connector to the CAN bus so that they can start the car and all the other stuff. And then in March, Lexus UK provides a statement on vehicle thefts and they are looking at you can add protective plates to their vehicles and then they also said that in October 2021 where they introduced in the new generation annex the second generation a new security platform was started to roll out and they said there were no reports of theft on the CAN bus injection method for any models with the new platform so that is definitely positive news right so in the video I mentioned that there is this open pilot project right so this whole open pilot project, it's been happening for so long, and this is targeted for getting products where they can actually enhance these semi-autonomous driving systems. What they do is they actually add a camera and then have their software running and talking to the CAN bus so that it can control the car with the steering and all the other stuff. So when Toyota introduced the secure onboard communication key product actually stopped working for these vehicles. And that's why you see that they have this GitHub talking about what vehicles are not working. So they were actually on a journey to try and see how they can actually extract that secure key. So when you look into this blog, they have a lot of things that they start talking about since October, like 2021, and they've been trying to find ways to extract the key. So when we go down here, you can start seeing March 2024, they actually said that there's a major update from the former comma staff, William. So he did create a new blog saying that giving information about how he can extract the secure OC key from the secure of the CAN bus in the 2021 RAV4 Prime. All right. So they've done a lot of research and done a lot of reverse engineering trying to get access to the key. And I can tell you, it actually worked. So they were able to get the key. So they also said that the reverse engineering key, they understand that they implement and they found the location in memory. So they said they, they found the key in memory and they were able to extract that out. You may all think, okay, now does that mean that my car can be stolen now? Well, the at this point, I would say no. Uh, it's not that easy at this point, but doesn't mean that it will not happen. So from there, what they did was they introduced another GitHub. So there's another GitHub, and this is actually a secure OC key extractor. So they're saying here, this rep repository contains scripts to extract the secure OC keys. See related blog posts for more details, confirming it works for 2021 RAV4 Prime and 2021 Sienna LE. So there's these two models that they've successfully extracted the key. So keep in mind, the RAV4 Prime and the Sienna is a 2021 model year vehicle. And when you look at it, Lexus said that October 2021 is when they release this new platform. So I speculate that this 2021 RAV4 Prime, the Sienna, are really just a proof of concept to ensure that they can actually get this implemented before actually rolling it out to all new vehicles. So I don't know if this is the final version because later on in this video, you'll start seeing that they've introduced some other components and I'm not sure which vehicles have those components. And at this point, they are not able to pull the key from vehicles with that component. All right. So at this point, 2021 model years, they're able to extract the key. Looking at here, you can also see what they say. 
use this at your own risk because nobody's validating it. You have to be extremely brave because if this doesn't work, it may break your EPS, your electronic power steering. So only attempt this if you're willing to replace the electronic power steering or the steering rack if needed. If you run this, it breaks it, you've lost your warranty, and also you, you can prove that it worked. You cross your fingers, pray to God, everything will work. So it says this requires communication over the CAN and the latest Panda Python library is needed. So they have to tell you how to install it. I'm not gonna do this and I'm not gonna do this to my vehicle as well. All right, so you can see here, they're dumping the keys and then they got the ECU master key and they have uh, the secure key extracted. So now let's go and look at this blog and see what else we can get from this blog. Follow me on Instagram at LSFT videos. You can see updates on my experience with the NX 450H Plus, which may not be shown on any future videos. You can reach out to me via direct messaging if you have any questions on your Lexus. If you like this video, you can provide me feedback in the comments below, like this video, share it with your friends. This definitely will help with the YouTube algorithms. Press the subscribe button and bell icon and get notified when new videos show up. And lastly, if you want to support me further, you can provide me a super thanks or visit my Amazon storefront before you purchase anything from Amazon and or you can purchase products from the list on the items that I've been using with my vehicle or at home at no extra cost to you. And now let's continue with the video. All right, so now we're at the blog and I, I'm not gonna go through this full blog because again, I think I'll have the link in the description below. So for anybody who is interested in reading this and also for the folks who are smarter than I am, read it and probably give me more of a, like, a download of what this all means. And I understand most of this, but again, I think explaining it, it probably is another thing, but reading it, understanding it is another thing as well. All right, so this actually talks about what is a secure onboard communication, what's the SEC OC, and it's actually a new standard. So it's not something that Toyota developed themselves. It's actually using a standard that was built. They actually they wanted to extract this because they, they are attacking the power steering ECU and then they're running the their open pilot like, software on it, and that's what they wanted to do. All right, so let me continue to go down this. So they explain what is the SEC OC and just giving you terminology, understanding what things mean and how things are communicated in the CAN bus and what's different from previous, okay? So you can see here, the research began in 2021 when first Toyota vehicles with SEC OC started to come out. At that time, most common vehicles was the 2021 RAV4 Prime, but due to chip shortages, it was very hard to find. So then later on, the SEC OC started rolling out on more Toyota vehicles first only vehicle produced in the Japanese plant, but was now made its way to the US produced Corollas, okay? So then they're saying that besides a target vehicle, we also needed to select a target ECU that used SEC OC in the message it received to or transmit. This means that the power steering EPS, four camera and powertrain PCM ECUs were all possible targets. So the reason why they, they use the power steering is because the microchip inside needs to adhere to certain safety standards such as the ASILD. Hopefully that means it uses older technology with less secure features. Also the firmware on the ESPS is usually not too big, which should make reverse engineering a lot less harder, right? So then they're saying that after they've chosen the target ECU, they then went and started to figure out how to extract the firmware. So they're saying that the car is very rare and there's no crash vehicles, vehicles showed up for parts. So in the end, they actually bought the whole steering rack as a new spare part. They've invested a lot here. The EPS contains uh, a chip and then they're saying that the, the debug port was locked. Using voltage fault injection attack, we were able to extract the firmware anyway. So then they, they talk about reverse engineering and then how they got the bootloader to load and then how they actually did the update procedure. All right, so I'm gonna skip all this because again, it's too boring and if you're interested, definitely go and read it. 
I'll go to the conclusion and also notes for the newer vehicles because I think that's where the biggest things that we need to figure out. So they're saying that in this blog, we discussed different steps that are giving owners the cars full access to the CAN bus and generate a valid secure OC max. Summarizing the following steps. So they're saying that they have to extract the firmware from the ECU using a fault injection to bypass the lock debug port. So they, the port is already locked. So don't, so Toyota just, just didn't open up the port. So it's something that they've actually locked, but then they had to do something to actually unlock it. So then they reverse engineered the application code and understood how it was implemented. And they found that the keys were in RAM, okay, meaning in memory. They re reverse engineered the bootloader to understand how the update procedure works and how we can upload and run shell code. So then they built a shell code to extract keys from the memory and send it out over the CAN, then reboot the device. So you can see that this says that it allows us to extract the security key in just a few seconds without making any changes to the vehicle. Having this key then allows us to send message to any ECU we want and control all drive-by wire features such as lane cube assist, adaptive cruise control, and an automatic emergency braking. This was possible due to two mistakes made by the developers of the ECU. Okay, so they, they're saying that there were some mistakes made. The main problem is the lack of proper cryptographic signature on the payload uploaded to the bootloader. This needs to be done using some something like the PKCS RSA signature where extracting the firmware does not allow you to generate valid signatures. The second issue is that they're not using an HSM to store the keys used in the security key. However, it could be argued that without secure bootload and the code execution, it doesn't matter that much more. More on the following section, okay? So they've identified two issues with the code that they have on the ECU. So I think the next and most important is this section here. So notes on newer vehicles, okay? So they're saying that this blog is the process for 2021 Ralph 4 Prime. And we do know that it works for the 2021 Sienna as well at this point. So they're saying that when they started this research, there were fewer cars that actually had the secure OC. And it will be interesting to see if we can apply the same methods to a 2024 Prius or Corolla, which also has the secure OC and will be sold in more larger numbers. We already took a quick look at the steering power steering from a 2023 Corolla Cross. It also has a secure OC and it was easy to obtain and more recent than the RAV4 Prime. This ECU already shown, showed some interesting developments. It's based on almost the same microcontroller and also shares the same bootloader code. So it's trivial to gain code execution again. So they're saying that it's a, this allows extracting the firmware without needing the fault injection again. However, they seem to have realized that implementing SecOC in software might not be the best move and started using HSM in the microcontroller. So you can see that in 2023 Corolla Cross, they actually now implemented the HSM. So they're saying that from a theory's perspective, the SecOC can still be broken on newer vehicles that use the HSM. We have code execution so that we can ask the HSM to sign whatever message we want and turn the ECU into a signing oracle, which means Toyota and Lexus has not stopped making changes to this secure key. Over time, they've actually introduced more things to it. So then they're saying that from a practical perspective, we can't just extract the key from RAM. So they just cannot get it from, from the memory and now they have to do more to actually get access to the key. However, they're saying that they have to do more investigation on how the HSM is used exactly. Maybe the keys can still be extracted using a different method. For example, during a rekeying operation. As the last resort, we can always disable the secure OC completely by patching the firmware, but this is not a very elegant solution. So another key point here is that how do they extract the key? So they're saying that with the vehicle completely off and the, the brake pedal not pressed, press the power button twice to get the car into ignition mode. So without the green ready light for being going on, then they can run the script, okay? So first things first, 
you need to have access to the car. So you can't just go and pull the, the headlight wires and get it done. That's one thing that they cannot do because they cannot get the key. So in order to get the key, they have to break open to your car, get access to the, the steering wheel column, get something plugged in, get into ignition mode, and then extract the key. Then they can have access to the CAN bus. The attack will be not as simple as just being outside of the car. You need to be inside the car in order to do that. Not saying that it's not easy to do that as well. So now with them being able to extract the security key, but again, we still haven't been able to validate any of the Lexus vehicles have been extracted. They have only done it to the RAV4 Prime and the Sienna on the 2021 model year. I'll be monitoring to see if they continue can extract more uh, vehicles. And if I do see any Lexus vehicles, I think I will let you guys know. Should you be worried about this? I really don't know at this point. Uh, anything that gets uh, created could be hacked, could be accessed in some shape or form. Again, if your car is high in demand, you should always find ways to protect your vehicle. And I hope Lexus will actually watch this video and really monitor this, uh, this type of can attack and see if they can actually create updates so that they can update the software or the firmware on our vehicles so that it will be harder for them to be able to extract these keys. And really, if you're interested in this like open pilot or comma software, great. You have a way to have access to the keys and be able to use this third party application. I don't think this is a bad thing. And really, we're in the age where when there's software, there's always ways to crack this code. And it's almost like back in the days where you get a virus, you go get antivirus software. And then that's where you really say, that's where the IGLA systems and all the other systems that you can add onto the vehicle to protect your vehicle. With that being said, I don't think it's an alarming situation at this point. If they have to have access to your CAN bus, they can still find ways to get into your car, extract it, and then get the key then be able to go through it. If thieves actually take this code and try it on a vehicle and it breaks the EPS, like the electronic power steering or the steering rack, then that is, they can't steal it. And that will be a little bit more damaging to your wallet because then you need to repair the vehicle because they attempted this attack. Another thing to look at is the ignition on mode. With the ready light not being on, I'm a little bit concerned because a lot of the Lexus, especially NX hybrids and all that, if you keep that ignition on for too long, your 12 volt battery probably won't last and then your car won't even start. So I really don't know what this means at this point, but I just wanted to create this video give you guys an update on how far are they in extracting the key. And it does look like they have been able to extract the key for certain vehicles. But at this point, we don't know if they're able to extract the keys from the NX, RX, or any newer vehicles. So just to conclude, I would say that we should still be responsible for our vehicles, try and find ways to protect it from being stolen on any method the CAN bus injection attack, the, like the key relay, or any other method. If they really want your vehicle, they will find a way to get it. I hope that you found that this video was informative and until next video, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, share this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can provide me a super thanks. And until next time, cheers.